So to begin the on-site inspection process, I'm going to be logging in as a supervisor user to launch the on-site inspection process and assign an inspection lead and supporting team members. I'm going to head to New Requests to start a new process. And you can see this user has the ability to start the on-site inspection process. Upon launching the process, the user will be required to fill out an initial form to manage the team members that will be a part of this investigation. I'm going to select user Dan Malone, and I'm also going to add additional members to be part of the inspection team. And clicking on Start is going to launch the first task, which is the inspection memo. Here in the date of notification, I'm going to indicate the date where we're going to notify the entity that is being inspected. And the inspected entity, I get to select the organization from this drop down list generated by the system of all the organizations available in the system. I've selected Alliance Capital. And next, we have a section to fill in the rational scope and objectives of this investigation. I have previously prepared this section, so I'm going to quickly just paste that in there and proceed. And I'm going to submit the inspection memo. And you can see that there are additional tasks for this inspection now. We're going to head to the in-progress request to see what other tasks have been generated. And here we can see a task, which is the first request for information. This is a pre-inspection form that has to be filled out by a user from the inspected entity. I'm going to click on this icon and reveal some options here where we have task assignment. And the system will allow myself as the supervisor user to assign tasks specifically to a user in the system that we have identified as a part of the team member. I'm going to select Jane to complete this form. So now you can see that the task is now displayed in gray since it is no longer assigned to my user, but it has been assigned to Jane to fill out. I'm going to be logging in as Jane to submit the pre-inspection form. I'm going to head to the in-progress request and locate the same process. And here you can see this user has now access to fill out the first request for information. Um, you'll also notice that this user, as the external entity, does not get to see any other steps within the investigation and will only have access to work on tasks that have been specifically assigned to them by the inspection lead or the supervisor. I'm going to click on the pre-inspection form. We can see that this is a short form here that I could quickly fill out. Again, I'm going to quickly fill out the mandatory fields. And with all the mandatory fields filled in, I'm also going to head to the Attachments tab to ensure that we have all the necessary documents uploaded. An organization chart is mandatory, so I'm going to select that from my directory. I will also attach the staffing levels and key functions, as well as internal audit procedures. So along with the three uploads, I'm going to submit our pre-inspection form. And head back to the in-progress requests. 
And I can see this task has been submitted by Jane and Jane will not gain any access to the rest of the inspection process. I'm going to be logging in as an inspection lead user now to walk through the rest of the on-site inspection process. We're again going to head to the in-progress requests and take a look at the tasks that has been created and appended to the inspection process. We can see the inspection memo that has been left to us by the supervisor. We can also see the first request for information that has been submitted. And we can see that now the field work is in progress and there are three tasks that has been generated based on our basic template design. So we have the on-site inspection kickoff meeting, senior management interview, and procedure walkthrough that we have pre-designed into this process. I'm going to select the on-site inspection kickoff meeting and schedule this task. And I can select the meeting invitees by clicking on their name and moving them to the right side into the selected user box. And once I click save, the system is going to automatically schedule the meeting. As you can see here, the status has now changed and it's also going to send out the invitations to those that have been invited to the meeting. And in case additional tasks must be added to the inspection to accommodate the changing circumstances, the inspection lead has the option to do so by heading to the actions column once again and clicking on this icon for the main process. And they'll see four different subtasks that can be added to any process, which is a meeting task, payment task, milestone task, or a document task. Selecting one of these options will allow the user to create a subtask ad hoc and append it to the process. For example, we'll try creating a milestone task. And this milestone task is to collect a scenario analysis from the inspected entity. So I'll give it a title. I'll also assign a due date. and leave a note. And I'll also be able to select the user responsible for completing this task. I'm going to select Jane once again and hit save. So now the system has generated a milestone task and appended to this process. We can see here, submit scenario analysis is now awaiting completion, and we can see the due date as well. Uh, this task is displayed in gray since we have specifically assigned it to Jane. If we need to change the user assigned or the due date at any time, we can click this icon on the action column, and we can select one of these options here. In order to continue on with the process, I'm going to manually end the investigation. I have a uh, action button to complete field work, which will now launch the reporting phase. And here you can see the on-site inspection report has been generated. So the on-site inspection team is required to prepare an inspection report to communicate their findings, requirements, and recommendations internally and with the inspected entity. 
On the draft report, multiple team members can work on the report concurrently and collaborate to prepare the final report. So I've just filled in the executive summary that I have previously prepared. And now I'm going to select the supervisory rating for this inspection. For the risk rating, we'll say it's moderate. The direction of composite risk is right now increasing. And the duration of the risk forecast will describe it as six months. And the intervention stage rating is at an early warning stage. And here in the next section, we have the fieldwork findings where we're able to enter in the investigation type as well as any of the findings and the details that we have uncovered during the inspection fieldwork. We had a senior officer interview as part of the investigation, and I'm going to paste in the findings that we have. And also here in the inspection outcome, we have a section to add in the requirements and recommendations. I'm going to copy in the requirement that I have previously prepared, which is a fine, and I'm also going to assign a due date. Assuming that the report has been completed, I'm going to submit the report, which will now execute a consistency review. The consistency review is a manual decision task, and by clicking on its name, we can open the review task which is to um, check for the inspection finding consistency. And we have an option to either approve or reject this review. And we're going to approve the review to move on with the process. Once the review is complete, um, the system has done two things. One is generate a PDF copy of the inspection report so that it is immediately ready for distribution. By clicking on the report name, it's going to download a copy to our desktop. And here you can see the PDF copy that has been generated based on our report. Also, it created a final meeting task for us to schedule the exit meeting with the inspected entity. And this is the end of the on-site inspection business process that we have designed.